Hey everybody, it's Peter, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about the IMU Enhanced Chassis Orientation Awareness. Yes, I'm using a cheat sheet. We're gonna talk about some of the technologies in modern Kawasaki, specifically modern Kawasaki sport bikes, and I'm gonna to try to make sense of them in plain language and translating it into what it's doing while you're riding, because quite frankly, some of the pieces in there kind of confused me, and maybe some of them still do. Uh, but I was in contact with someone from Kawasaki's head office yesterday. He helped me. Ex he helped explain a few things to me, and I think I'm ready to present to you what these systems are, how they work, and what they do. So before we get into that, a couple things are going on here. First of all, I want to thank Jim Gilbert's Power Sports here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They give me complete line, complete access to their Kawasaki lineup, including their model toys, uh, and that's going to be useful in this video. But the bigger thing is. There's no possible way I can answer every question you have about some of the technologies here. So if you have questions, let me know in the comments below and uh, also subscribe. Do me a favor, subscribe. This is actually a harder video to put together. It seems simple, but it was a tough one. So if I can earn your subscription, that'd be great. Um, and then I will answer those questions in the comment section, but also in future videos. So I want to thank Jim Gilberts for giving me access. They're an amazing dealer here in Fredericton, uh, New Brunswick. But let's get going with the content here. The only thing you need to know is at times I'm going to use my laptop here as a cheat sheet, and at times I'm going to use it as a sort of a visual reference point for what we're doing with the bike here, just so you can see. All right, let's dig in. Have a ZX14, ZX14 if you're in the States, but we're filming in Canada, so it's a ZX14 here. Um, this bike does not matter, except that it is something that I can pick up and move around, which is easier to do with than the real bike. So the IMU, Enhanced Chassis Orientation Awareness. What is it really? It's a six axis IMU. So what that means is it's checking six different axes. Let's put the kickstand up here. It is checking forward and back, that's one, two. It is checking side to side, that's three, four, and it is checking up and down, that's five, six. So that seems, even though it's advanced, seems kind of basic. What's cool about this is it also can check rotation on those axis, axis. So here's where things start to make sense. It can check on the one axis, it can check lean angle. So it can check the sort of the twisting around, which you can see how that might be useful on a motorcycle. It can uh, rotate here on this axis, the rotation around there, which you can see how that might be useful as well. And it also can uh, rotate on this axis there. So it's checking all of these, forward, back, side to side, up, down, and rotationally how they go on each axis as well. So it's measuring a lot and it's measuring it regularly. And on its own, that's interesting, but it works with many of the other systems. And the key thing to know here is that Kawasaki has proprietary software to work with their bikes on some of these things. And it adds things like, for instance, a regular bike might just have ABS. Now, ABS is not part of the IMU. ABS uses the wheel speed sensors and it makes decisions. So if you just had ABS, you could then have traction control because ABS measures wheel speed sensors and so does traction control. Same hardware, different software. If you had just ABS or just traction control and a bike went into a wheelie, what it has to do is it has to figure out, okay, this wheel is moving at a certain speed and this wheel is moving at a ever slowing speed. It would be late to react because this would take a while to say to fully slow down and then it might, would probably create a harsh reaction to come back down. So as an example, if you just had the wheel speed sensors, that's how it would work. But because a Kawasaki bike also has the ability to sense various things, it can sense if you go into a wheelie through the IMU and through the wheel speed sensors and that kind of thing. So it can help keep you safe, which is why there are various levels of traction control. Now, when I say keep you safe, let's clarify right off the bat. If you get on this bike, things can go wrong. Your brain and your reactions and what you do is what keeps you safe on a motorcycle, any motorcycle. These systems are not going to save you from bad decisions up here. So let me just put that out there right now. Uh, I'm not speaking for Kawasaki or anybody else. I'm speaking for myself here. Um, motorcycles can be dangerous and no software or hardware is going to save you from doing dumb things. However, 
when you're riding, they can make a big difference in the way you ride. So for instance, let's take a look at cornering ABS. A normal bike going along with ABS brakes, the wheel locks up. Once that wheel locks up, what ABS does is it pulses it, right? And it pulses it, uh, allowing it to stay from locking up, which means the difference between doing something like this and going over and maintaining traction. Again, no system is perfect, but that's what it's designed to do, to help you maintain traction. So that ABS system, now has the ability to work with the IMU to understand lean angles, which is where you get Kawasaki's cornering ABS. Various bikes have ABS, various bikes have cornering ABS. Because it can sense the lean angle, because it can sense what your wheels are doing, it's going to react differently and smarter than many competitive bikes. That smarter reaction helps you as a rider. It just makes it better for you. It's the kind of stuff you wanna see. The other thing that the IMU does is because it can sense rotation like this, it can sense the difference between losing traction, which is what a traction control system does, where the rear wheel is spinning because you're giving it too much throttle, and losing traction while spinning out, for instance, right? You want to react differently, and if the bike's going to intervene, it should react differently if you're spinning out while staying completely upright, or if you're spinning out and starting to rotate down and rotate around. Those are things which can be problematic and be, can be quite scary. The bike is capable of helping mitigate some of those unwanted movements because it can sense them. It can react quicker than you can. Now you should probably do your best when you're riding to not put yourself into a situation where you have things like this going on. But with traction surfaces changing and with rider inputs, sometimes we make mistakes. Having a bike that is able to sense things can make a difference. Now, the other thing it does for you is it gives you different rider modes. So something like a Ninja 1000 is going to have the um, it's going to have the rain mode, it's going to have the sport mode or street mode, and it's going to have the the custom mode or the rider mode. So you can uh, customize how that works. Rain mode, of course, traction changes. Um, you're going to with a powerful bike, you're going to have issues with potentially traction if you're not really careful with that throttle. And so that dials up the traction control. However, if the bike only had a traction control set to rain mode, and you did want to do a track day, you're going to find that that rain mode is going to really slow you down on a track. So having the different rider modes is what the IMU is all about as well. Because if you've ever watched a race going on, you'll see people trail braking. They're able to, on a race bike, rotate that rear around in a controlled manner. Because sometimes, a slight loss of traction is not a slight loss of control, it's intentional. So when I'm riding on the road, I want no loss of traction. When I'm riding on a racetrack, there are times you may want a little bit of, uh, little bit of traction that loses. So knowing what your bike is doing, able to keep an eye on that, those are the situations where the bike can work with you. If you're the kind of person like me who does not want that slippage on the road, and you get it, let's say you hit some, you know, a little bit less more, or more slick pavement, the bike can sense that probably before you can, hopefully not, but I mean, it is very, very quick with these computers. Literally speed of light, it, the information is transferred to the computers for it to process. So when the bike is doing things that you don't want it to do, the bike is capable of reacting. So let's just summarize basically what it is. The IMU on its own just does some fancy stuff. It senses various things. The other systems can be improved with the extra data. The IMU gives data to systems that are other systems and it allows the bike to react. It's not going to save you. It's not going to um, you know, make it you know, you know, something that cannot be crashed. What it does do is it allows the bike to sense when it has problems or inputs that you don't want. Again, if your traction control is set to the highest level, it's gonna say, hey, this person does not want some of these movements. If it's set to a lower level, it's gonna say this person does or will be comfortable with some of those movements. So it allows you to customize the bike for your skill set, to customize the bike for the traction situations, if it's slippery roads, that kind of thing, rainy roads, and it allows you to change that on the fly to work with you to, in my mind, help keep you safer and certainly help make the bike more fun, which is how Kawasaki advertises that as well. So again, safety starts here. That's what the six axis IMU does. It works with the other systems to sense the movement of the bike 
instead of just the speed of the tires. And it's one of the really cool things, the way their software is dialed in on Kawasaki's, it's one of the really cool things that makes these bikes great. So when you make a video like this, I can't say this is gonna keep you safer, but I can say that for me, it gives me some more confidence that the bike is trying to keep me safe in the same way I am trying to keep me safe. Now, you have to decide for yourself if that's how it makes you feel. It is not designed to replace what you're thinking and what you're doing with your hands and your feet and your body and everything else. Uh, but it is something that to me shows that Kawasaki is committed to safety and committed to fun. So it's a pretty cool system. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And again, we'll come back, we'll do videos with actual motorcycles where we can talk about more of these technologies. So thanks everybody for watching and uh, do me a favor. I, I know it seems like this was a simple video. This was a tough one to put together. So do me a favor, uh, hit the subscribe button, give me some likes, give me some positive comments. And again, ask questions if you have them. I may not have the answers, but I'll try to find them out. And we'll just keep coming back and build a little community here where we can get some answers. Thanks for watching. Yeah.